In a solar system much like our own, there lives a species of little green men. Having reached the pinnacle of civilization, they've developed advanced technology that has allowed them to brush the stars and place Kerbals on other planets. However, the lack of any health and safety regulations has led to the loss of many brave Kerbals, and now, finally, the entire industry is on the verge of collapse. Out of money and of the public eye, the government has provided them with one last chance, the funds necessary for an entire new space program. However, this comes with a catch. Not a single Kerbal can be lost. Hey guys, Harv here, and I hoped you liked that little introduction. Yes, this is the Kerbal Space Program Permadeath, or the Permadeath, Permadeath Space Program. Yes, many new series coming onto the channel. And I have to officially announce the retirement of some of our old series, the Space Fleet. Uh, we are going to finish it, but it's only going to be another one or two episodes. So, we shall make our new space program, the Permadeath Space Program. Not a single Kerbal can be lost in the process of us establishing contact once more with the depths of the solar system. Or Kerbal system, the bowl, the bowler system. It's the bowler system. That's what it is. Now, what we're going to do in this first episode? Well, to be on the safe side, I don't want to end this straight away. <laughs> we're going to put up something very necessary for the success of any space mission: proper communications relays. So we're going to put up a communications satellite, and we'll use the regular probe command module for this. Um. Yes, yes, we are here with Hawk Gaming, your flight director, engineer, and, and in fact, pilot. Uh, budget cuts, ladies and gentlemen, budget cuts. I'm going to put a couple of fuel tanks on this, an ant engine, and we'll have a couple of solar panels. Uh, where are the solar panels I want? Here. There we go. Um, what else? We'll put them a bit further down. We'll have some batteries, I think. Uh, there we go. So the idea is that we don't lose a single Kerbal. And if we do, that's it. The series ends. I'm sure you've seen many YouTubers doing permadeaths. Nerdcubed, he does permadeaths. Absolutely brilliant. So I thought I would unashamedly copy him. Is there anything else that needs to be going on this? Uh, gen generators, yes. We shall put some radioisotope thermoelectric generators inconspicuously on the side there. Um, and that is pretty much it. Might as well put some more some more communicatrons just just in case. There we go. That's a nice little package. We can get that into orbit very easily. Uh, this is going to be entirely unedited. So and we're going to try and be as efficient as possible as well. Returning parts to Kerbin. None of that explosive nonsense that I, I just end the flights. No, nope. we're not going to... We're going to try and leave a little, as little as possible in orbit. Try and make sure everything returns back to where it should be. Uh, there we go. How about this design? This is... I think I vaguely remember using this. It used to work. Um, let's hope it still does very simple launcher. For those of you who are still struggling to get into orbit, this series will appeal. I'm working from the bottom up, doing an entire space program, unedited, and explaining what I'm doing. I hope that is appealing to you all. Let's put some winglets on it. Come on, we need winglets. Um, we'll actually put three proper winglets on this thing. Oh, and we need advanced SES, don't we? Of course we do. And let's move this up we get our advanced SES to keep things steady and controlled. Um, okay. Right. What else do we need? I don't think we need much, really. We have winglets. We have that. Maybe... Hmm. No, I think we've got enough to get this into orbit, certainly. Hopefully we'll be able to get this thing uh, back home. In fact, we could probably put a parachute on it and recover it at a later date. Um, no, it's probably not worth it, actually. The cost of sending something out there to recover it probably doesn't really cover the uh, the amount we save from saving that engine. Okay, put two launch lamps on this, and we are ready to put this in orbit, I think. I think this is definitely orbital capable. Okay, we have our engine firing and both launch lamps detaching at the same time. 
then that detaches and our next engine fires immediately. And then that det detaches and our final engine... There we go. Right, we shall call this our comms satellite. There we go. Uh, Mark 1, of course. Uh, and we sort out action groups. Uh, action group 1, we are just going to... Um, we'll leave... Yeah, actually, we can turn off gimbal. We have winglets there to do that for us. We don't really need it. Action group 2 will open up the solar panels and the communicatron. Communotron. And, of course, these two antenna on the side. There we go. That's everything. Right. We are ready. Ready to launch our first communications thing in this... Our first mission in this entire space program. Hopefully, it'll go completely smoothly. Okay, onto the launch pad we go. Yes, everything going smooth so far. But then again, we've only really built things, so... <laughs> ah, I don't know, anything can happen. At least if this thing explodes, we haven't lost a Kerbal. There we go. Very nice. I, we really need fairings, actually. I know there's a mod. Um, Scott Manley promoted it or had a part in making it, I'm not sure. But there's a fairings mod. I may consider doing a modded Let's Play of some description. Um, my idea of what mods can and can't be used are very strict. As you know, I haven't done any so far. I don't think I've used any mods whatsoever, so... Oh ho, here we go. In three, two, one, liftoff. There we go. I double tapped one to turn off the gimbal here. Um, mainly because we don't really need it, because we've got these flaps doing our control for us. Um, of course, Gimbal and these flaps here are both controlled by the advanced SAS unit, so we can have that on by pressing T. You see this SAS marker comes up and flashes off whenever I toggle T, and that keeps us pointing in one direction. Right, to get into orbit, we're going to keep going up. We're, this main stage, because we are doing a very minimalistic mission right here, uh, this first main stage, we're just going to go straight up so that our weak little engine in the next stage is able to actually complete the orbit. And I don't think we'll complete it entirely. We want to li make sure that this part gets returned into the atmosphere and kills itself. <laughs> Crashes somewhere in the ocean, hopefully. So we won't entirely complete it. We'll be able to finish off with the ant engine. Hopefully, all going well. Uh, this is about to run out, so three, two, one, detach. Nice and smooth, no shaking. You can see we're slowing down, uh, but we should have enough thrust to carry on going. 348.2, and we start accelerating. Now we can start tipping over, now that we're sure that's okay. Um, holding F will turn off advanced SAS for a short while, whilst you hold it, that is, um, just so I can perform the manoeuvre. So to get into orbit, we are pointing towards the east, 90 degrees, uh, because Kerbin rotates at, what was it, 360 meters per second? So you actually get, the momentum is conserved and you carry on, it helps you get into orbit. Okay, nearing 500 meters per second, going to tip over some more, halfway over, there we go. So we're going, this is going to be an equatorial 90 degree orbit. And there's the moon. <laughs> Ah, uh, we're not going there yet, but we will. This is going to be my type of space program, I can tell. I absolutely love trying to be careful, more realistic. Um, and with the weight of budget cuts hanging over our heads, we have enough to use any, port, any part we desire unless we lose a Kerbal. Hopefully this will get space industry back into the public eye. Okay, we're going over a thousand meters per second, so we can tip completely over. We're trying to get as much lateral velocity as possible now. Uh, we'll put this into a 150 km orbit, I think. So, despite the fact we're not pointing upwards anymore, our highest, our trajectory will continue to increase. Um, just, it'll be more going sideways, increasing our orbital velocity. There we go. We are almost out of the atmosphere. You can see the reader up here. There we go. Right. Very, very close. I don't want to open the solar panels yet, but as soon as we're out of the atmosphere, we will. 
Um, this is starting to run out rather quickly, but I think it's okay. Okay, 81, 82, 83. We can probably do physics warp, but no, it's climbing fast enough, we don't really need to. Um, and there we go, 100, we want 150, that's what we're aiming for. 130, 140, and 152, that's, that's good enough. We don't need to be precise. Right, we are almost run out. Um, in order to get into orbit now, we need to warp around to our apoapsis. We can open up those solar panels, we might as well, uh, by pressing 1. No, 2. There we go, 2. Open all our antennae, antennae, antenna, <laughs> our communications dish, and our solar panels. Nice little probe we've got here, I think. Certainly hope so. Um, carry on going. We could use flight planning at this point, but I can't really be bothered. Just know that once you get to your apoapsis, you need to start burning prograde, which is always horizontal to Kerbin. Well, no, prograde isn't always, but at your apoapsis it is. Um, so we're pointing directly horizontal, and we are going to burn. Oh, hang on. No, we're going, we're going to expel that now. There we go, carry on burning. Um, I left that just now, despite the fact I had some fuel left in it. I didn't want to use it uh, for the rest of the way, because it got us uh, almost out of the atmosphere. And I want it to sail back down and destroy itself in the atmosphere. Okay, see the apoapsis is going behind us, we're going to tip up in order to counteract that. Pointing upwards, you see it comes back towards us. I want us to be in a perfectly circular orbit at 152 kilometers or so. There we go. We have plenty of fuel for this. Good work, Harvey, good work. 152 and 152. There we go. Doesn't matter the 500 meter difference or so, that's not really important. Right, and it even comes up with the icon automatically. Love that icon. Really, really cool. Really, really cool. Um, we might want to change inclination to make sure we're perfectly equatorial. So we set the moon as our target because the moon is in an equatorial orbit. And we have 0 0.2, 0 0.2 difference between us and it. That's absolutely fine. We'll adjust that. So we're coming upon the descending node. Um, so we'll point towards the north and we'll leave the, we'll leave the ship, uh, the probe. The communication satellite will leave it pointing north, so that it doesn't spin head over heels as it orbits. Right, there we go, coming upon the thing. Hopefully, that is well in the atmosphere, so hopefully this will suddenly blink out of existence. Um, we need to be pointing north. There we go. Don't have an advanced SAS unit on this satellite, but the probes seem to have their own minor advanced SAS. So, having it on certainly does help keep us pointing in one direction. Ah, look at that. Very nice. Look at the blinding Kerbal Sun. Right, and burning. Point 0.1 difference. And... Point zero difference. No difference whatsoever. 152 and 152. There we go. Absolutely brilliant. Um, just keep on orbiting. Now we've got this in orbit. We want this to disappear. If it doesn't, we're going to be in trouble. Should do. If we switch to it, it will eventually. There we go, swapped out to this. Because the periapsis is 47. So, despite the fact it doesn't get destroyed immediately, um, we will slow down from atmospheric drag and gradually crash into the ground. Our first communication satellite in orbit. I think we'll probably just have that one. Um, makes no sense to really remain on that mission for any massive amount of time. Oh, we still have some fuel in this, so we can actually burn retrograde. Ah, but we're out of electric charge. Damn it, I should have put some generators on this one as well. Or at least some solar panels of some sort. Uh, because it's unmanned, we can't use... We can't use any of the ship's functions uh, without electricity. And we've got no generators or solar panels. But oh well, we should be able to... There we go, you see our periapsis is decreasing. Um, if we actually make a maneuver node, there we go, we can see how much progress do we need. 
107 meters per second. We need to air brake for 107 or 106 now, it's counting down. That's much worth. Mm, that shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> if we leave this to its own devices, I think it should be okay. We don't really need to concentrate on it right now. Um, I can probably do it off camera sometime. So we'll swap back to our comms satellite. And that is a mission success. That is a tutorial on how to orbit, how to make a satellite, and how to make a minimalist it's minimalistic satellite launcher. All in one video, aren't you guys lucky? Very nice. What could I have done to improve this? Um, I don't know. I think the problem is that it only gets daylight uh, at certain points. Well, obviously because Kerbin it will be in the way. But we only have two sticks. Maybe four would have been better. But that's not the main concern. The main concern is we have plenty of communication dish <laughs> and antennae. Antenna, antennas, whatever. And yes, that is absolutely fine. How much fuel do we have left in this, I wonder? Uh, we have... Oh, absolutely plenty. So when we want to replace this, we can deorbit it. I have loads of fuel left for that. There we go, episode one. We're going to be doing a mission A episode, depending. Uh, if you guys like the idea of this series and enjoyed this episode, please do give me a like to let me know, and of course a comment. If there's anything, any missions you want to suggest for the future, they are more than welcome in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.